Soy el profesor Humberto Ramírez. Hello, I am Professor Humberto Ramírez from Mexico, and I'm going to present an electrodynamic system of synthesis carbon nanostructures by electrical fields of plasma. The authors of the project, among others, is myself, Humberto Ramírez Hernández, and a group of multidisciplinary team that participated in investigation. For example, Professor Francisco Espinosa Magaña, the Professor Armando Erasto Zaragoza Contreras from CIMAV, uh, the Professor Salvador Fernandez Tavizón from SICA, and Professor Jesus Alonso Mercado from SICA also. This system is said that, uh, as the title said, its main objective is uh, nanostructure synthesis or synthesis of nanostructures. And on this investigation, the synthesis was taking place and the dimensization structural of the nanostructures on which mainly are like uh, graphene, nanotubes, fullerenes, C60s and C60s, as well as nanotorques that are not mentioned here but are produced in the same process. And it's a very adequate process of synthesis that is used, uh, that use different fields of plasma. I call the system a multiple system synthesis by this means of the different electrical fields in the, in the toroidal coil of Tesla coil in the system where the synthesis is made. And the structural dimensional characterization of uh, nanostructure material was made by uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy, diffraction of X-ray, and transmission electron microscopy, electron microscopy, uh, atomic force microscopy, and uh, energy electron loss spectrum. On this synthesis, I said, consists on generate nanostructures by this method that I already explained in the abstract. The main objective here is the, uh, the generation of nanostructures by using the Tesla coil as plasma generator of the system uh, being at low cost technology that can be widely used for research material sciences. Being a very low technology that can be widely used for research materials sciences by a very economical method and very simple synthesis method that is the objective of this new system. The synthesis method consists, uh, as I said before, in a Tesla coil that generates plasma in the MSR, in the reactor of multiple synthesis that is very equivalent to the quartz tube that today is used to produce this kind of nanostructures. In this case, the Tesla coil that works with uh, solid graphite electrodes, or you can use also fine dust particles. These particles made of graphite. Yes. Uh, commonly, the first samples that I made with this uh, uh, to check this this uh, device uh, were with 50 kilobytes in the Tesla coil, but in the on the industrial uh, field, it can be used with multiple electrodes and toroidal coils with uh, uh, 100, 250, or 500 kilovolts. 
The application that is said before in the synthesis process is a very low cost and have widely used in, in to the industrial production of the nanostructures that are being used nowadays in electronics in electronics and computing and can be made on high scale due to the simple process with high purity that I will explain further. The advantages of the systems are, among others, the main uh, advantage is the low economical production cost. That as, I, that, as I said before, the actual systems, besides be, being very complex, are highly expensive and difficult to operate. On the other hand, this is very economical with the advantage that is very simple. As shown there in the Sika laboratory, where in a thermal chamber with noise isolation, control temperature, the device was set here is a Tesla's coil, as so you can see the plasma in the reactor. Yes, and the toroidal coil, you can see the blue lights. There is where there is a place where the synthesis was taking place inside the Sika laboratories. Next is shown the photography of the reactor that is equivalent to the industrial quartz reactor that is used right now in the structures. Uh, that actually is where normally the synthesis of this kind of nanostructure is taking place on industrial scale. The plasma is seen perfectly inside the quartz tube on low scale, but with more efficiency. Uh, that is commonly inside the plasma tube. The electric fields must be very strong due to the extremely high voltage. But here, with normal supply, the same result could be obtained. During the development of the project of synthesis, where uh, we obtained graphite with cylindrical structure, even at the beginning we used uh, dust particles, very fine dot past particles, but the synthesis can be made on solid state or, sol or dust particles. The graphite of solid bodies reduce to ultrafine dust particles, that is where well, all the nanostructures are included and also the variation can be made on the toroidal coil for more efficiency. Even though the process, in the process of project, I made also carbon nanotubes and on the second coil. So I found two places where the synthesis can be made. Here you can see the enteroid are used nanotubes and also in the, uh, in the second part of the Tesla coil. There you can see the two parts where they can be used. It is shown in the chart that we logically with, uh, uh, with one 150,000 kV, uh, it is shown the production statistics. Uh, if you can see now, we started with a very low production of 6.7 milligrams, and as we were advancing in the production, the production was increasing. Even the second week, this was for eight hours of production. Logically, the kV was very low. So here you can see the average, the media, and the standard deviation that in the chart is very low, which means this method is very static. On this side, the information shows that total amount of production 
and the standard deviation on the static statistics. From here, you can see this characterization that is very important because you can see what kind of carbon nanostructures we have we were using, as well as the purity among other characteristics. Yes. For example, here in this study of X-ray refractions, we use three samples. You may see the color code, and here is between 20 to 30 degrees. That is where the carbon nanostructures have their peak in a DRX. So the purity is granted due to the fact the standard deviation is very low. And the chart is showing very low impurities, only one, as long as this method means is really efficient in the production of the pure carbon nanostructures. Once again, the standard deviation is really low, which indicates on the three samples coincidence that is very difficult to get on established reactors. We obtain here the same result. Uh, here you can see the perfect slope and here I show the degradation milligrams that is uh, that are obtained and that match perfectly with international database standards the peaks and slopes of carbon nanostructures this is a proven fact that that kind of nanostructures are being produced with just an insignificant variation. Here, in another sample, shows the same. You can see the symmetry and the slope. Here is where the degradation of the nanostructure begins. It is increasing, and here, at the end, that is the waste of the sample of uh, 1.47 milligrams only left 0 0.77 milligrams. This means that the production is really efficient and it's more or less a 50%. Here you can see the third sample. We have a very small situation that probably was produced by some impurity. But the TGA slopes and platforms demonstrate that the method is efficient to obtain an adequate industrial level purity. Here I show the sample percentages that was 1.80 milligrams and at the end we obtain a 54% of purity which is really good to obtain. Here I show the infrared spectroscopy rays, and I said before, the three samples are shown here in the graph. The results compared with international levels of infrared spectroscopy match positively with the form of nanostructures. If you see the production of the three sample is almost the same statistic profile and the infrared spectrum. I'm sure that no matter the variables, the process is efficient maintaining the purity of the result. Independently, the result of the variables, everything goes with a very good result. Now on the chart I show the result of uh, scanning electronic microscopy, the SEM, on which it can be perfectly that the nanostructures generated on one side are uh, mainly nanotubes, 
graphene and on the other side is a molecular agglomeration showing as eulerine correctly verified on the microscopy and of course graphic layers not transformed which means the synthesis time must be longer here you can see the even the exterior part of the pigs here you can see the, the same as even in the exterior part of the pigs are seen as carbon nanotubes the same here you can see uh, this side is probably um, millimicro as a structure that I'm describing. Does the method synthesize the mainly nanostructures used in electronics? Uh, also are using in computing or, man or data management. Here you can see perfectly that kind of nanostructures that are carbon nanotubes. On this image, you can see perfectly in the microphotography, the SEM, that is on a scale of 100 nanometers. So you can distinguish perfectly clear the growth of nanotubes, of graphene, and fullerene. There, also nanotors on this side. That indicates that it's a very efficient way to produce these nanostructures. With the zoom of 100 nanometers and with the SAM at 25 kilovolts, the fullerenes are distinguished perfectly in the image. Even I have other images that I use on my post degree studies that match the only difference was the scale of magnification. Yes, so uh, here I use uh, 10 nanometers and the molecular conglomerates appeared. There is, uh, here is understood that the production of fullerenes, C60s and C60s. Now it's time to show the prototype video of this carbon nanostructure electrodynamic system by plasma and electrical fields. So here is where you can see the plasma here and nowadays is equivalent to the already known quartz tube. As you can see in this, rust, this is rustic low cost device, nevertheless the purity that is produced with this kind of field was even in this part of the equivalent of the quartz tube. This is a part of the ignition coil. Here you can see the plasma and the, or the upper part of the toroid. I see another reactor that uh, generated nanostructures in both sides. Showing the efficiency with the sample characterization here in the plasma is where the nanostructures are generated, carbon nanostructures. Yes, so thank you very much for your attention and thank you ladies and gentlemen.